We'll let the audience at home and the audience in the theater know exactly what your line is. But when you signed and launched the Beatles, did you know, for example, or suspect that they might gross, uh, as we believe they have, five million in 12 months? I wouldn't have said that because I didn't think in terms of money, really. But I would have said that they would have been one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, attraction, theatrical attraction in the world. Everything has contributed, I think, uh, with a lot of luck that we've had, um, to make them the success that they are. Do you have any rough estimate of, of how much money the Beatles have made so far? No, it's impossible to say. And I wouldn't anyway. I, don't, I, you know, I, I think they're going to be successful in my estimation, a lot of other people's estimation, for many, many years. But uh, obviously it won't be the same kind of success. It's obviously going to <laughs> well, be a matured kind of success. Mm -hmm. Will you be coming back to the United States? Uh, th me personally. I mean the Beatles. Uh, the Beatles... Uh... Would you like to say Mary had a little lamb for me? <laughs> uh... No. Yes. <laughs> Do. Mary had a little lamb. I don't know how many million dollars it was that we were offered. Um, I mean, I suppose I could look it up and, and you know, I'm yeah. sure it's there in my files, <laughs> just in case. Because there were all kinds of a story, which, which, you, could, which you could all... Uh, in general, I think that the music scene will be as lively as it has been. I hope so, anyway. You were just going to do all kinds of other things. Sit in the grass. Oh, yeah. I don't think you could do that, Brian. No, I'm too gregarious. <laughs> Personal appearances have not been completely ruled out. No. I would like so much to produce and, dare I say it, act in a, sh um, a play. You know, you know, Nigel, when I said it sounded a bit like a dog bark, yes. uh, I think it, it should sound like that. Right. <laughs> 1961, October, I think. <laughs> uh, I mean, if, if it hadn't have been for my going down to the cavern in Liverpool, I don't suppose I would have been writing the book because nobody wanted to buy a book by me. <laughs> and what did you think when you first saw them? Oh, I was uh, sufficiently knocked out. <laughs> the presentation was well, left a little to be desired as far as I was concerned. Uh, as well, the musical standpoint was concerned. I suppose they did look a bit different. The pictures show today, I suppose, quite a marked difference. They were sort of f rather scruffily dressed mm. in, in the nicest possible way, or I should say in, in the most attractive way. Mm -hmm. They had what I thought was a sort of presence and uh, this is a terrible, vague term, star quality. Whatever that is, they had it. Or oh, I, I sense that they had it. Paul didn't show at all for at least three quarters of an hour, and I was a bit put out about this. I thought this is the first meeting. They want to do something about management and so on. And I asked one of the boys to get on the phone to him, and he came back and he said, well, he's just got up. He's in the bath. So I sort of, you know... <laughs> shouted about a bit, and I thought, this is very disgraceful indeed, and uh, how can he be so late for an important thing? And um, George just simply replied, it was very typical of them, well, he may be late, but he's very clean. Well, what about build-up, though? Well, I did everything that I could. Um, you know, everything, shouted from the rooftops. Beatles' new record is in the top ten. Gosh, fantastic! That's marvellous. Climbing fast. Well, it's at number seven already. I think it'll go to number one, actually. That's marvellous. Well, fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know, but it's just happened to me, actually. Mr. Barry Epstein, who is uh, actually the... the uh, uh... I didn't know they are in the cover. Brian Epstein, the Beatles' manager. They're such darlings. They are so they are. sweet they're... and funny and cute. So there aren't any sorry moments there. Yeah. No. They try and escape from it. Oh, no, 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 never. no, never. never. <laughs> <laughs> We're always looking. <laughs> we all make up our minds. I contribute, I suppose, a fifth. Well, I didn't, I, you know, I couldn't do what, obviously, I couldn't do what they do. It's, it's not my mm. job. I hate 
to a certain extent mentioning my own artists because it's fairly obvious that I think they're great, otherwise I wouldn't be managing them. Well, I didn't like to um, sort of uh, be particularly swanky about it, but it is going to be great. I come into them by my organisation in London, for which I'm called Capitalist. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say it was ruthless. I'd say the competition was very, very keen. Well, you've toyed with the idea of saying it's ruthless. How ruthless do you think you've got to be? Uh, not very. Uh, it may even be a fault of mine in the business that I'm not ruthless enough. As a businessman, fair. I, I, I've got a business background and uh, probably a, a reasonable business brain. I'm no, I'm no sort of genius. <laughs> I think, I think what you said, which was most salient, if they like that, on this program. Um, no, I, I never handle the administration side of management. It's sort of, it doesn't suit my temperament. It's always left to somebody else. I don't think it suits uh, mine either. Actually. <laughs> it's my duty to inform them, even though they may throw the bit of paper away on which I tell them, and I do not try to exploit them consciously. Anyway, <laughs> it depends how much they bring of themselves, or they wish me to bring of myself. That's ridiculous, though. No, this radio station fantastic. There's nothing like this in England, is it? No, no, no you can't be just calling into a programme all of a sudden to, to just have a little conversation. It's been an as pleasurable, quote, interview, unquote, as I've ever had, anyway. Do you feel that you exploit teenage talent? No. Talent? No, you could let, I, I think I developed teenage talent rather than exploit it. And you see no harm in it at all? No. You don't think that's an example of mass hysteria? Um, well, you know, what do you mean by mass hysteria, really? When people say you might have as much as 60% of them and 85% of your other artists. Yes, well, I don't. You know, it sounds awful, mass hysteria. It isn't awful, that's not awful. What? what? Six minutes. Three minutes. Oh, we'll see how it goes. Well, um, I wouldn't say that this was entirely true. We don't agree that they're enslaved by this tremendous commercial machine around the Beatles. Absolutely not. This no, is an there's example no, of the rights no, of Beatles. No, really, there's no tremendous commercial uh, machine around the Beatles at all. Of which you're the head. I've managed them. I'm not the head of any machine at all. Uh, you're their manager? Yes. One or two, I take the trouble to write back and... Uh, say, you know, this is not quite true. In fact, I'm a bit sort of stronger than that. I said that was a load of rubbish. Um, and I just want you to know it. Well, I've given a very full statement, which is fairly short anyway. I think you're, you're absolutely wrong. Hullabaloo, London. Welcome again to our show from London. Uh, at that time, I didn't know anything about the mind benders at all. It was a bit odd, anyway. And um, now, I know all about the mind benders. <laughs> Very, that was great. From now, goodbye, all the best. Thanks. All the best. Thank you. Produced many of good records. <laughs> Uh, I believe I was told by a, by a reporter from the National Newspaper that I was terribly awkward with my first interview. Not um, particularly uh, objectively, but uh, obviously, um, this is a very difficult thing. This is rather strange when you think of it in, in sort of oblique terms like that. The boys, on you, the, you. Um, oh, uh, well, I don't have that statement. I thought that was. Oh, a, in this statement? Yes. I well, pardon, yes. You just said you just got it. It's nominated for. Did it win the. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It did. It won, yeah, okay. I heard you <laughs> say so. I went to bed. I had a good night's sleep last night. Not in the entertainment business at the high It season. isn't. It isn't. Boys and myself, uh, most appreciative of 
uh, gesture. Like a husband best wisher. I wonder, could you, would you, would you like to speak to um, our attorney in New York, to his office, and he may be able to arrange something for you and put, put whatever offers you have to me. Uh, Hofer, H-O-F-E-R, Walter Hofer, and the telephone number is Johnson, 2 I felt probably everything that any um, Beatles fan, male Beatles fan, has ever felt. Uh, well, it probably sounds awful to say so, but yes, um, I never thought that there would be anything less than the greatest stars in the world. And uh, what's the name of the book again before we go? A Cellar Full of Noise. I want three balls in the... That's fine, I can cut it over there. Hello, this is John Lennon saying hi to everybody in Miami. Sorry we're not coming to see you this time, but we'll see you next time. Keep swimming. <laughs>